Until shortly before he became ill and died at the age of 82, he'd been swimming regularly all year round. Less a swimmer than a walker, I had just dipped my toes into the cold waters of the Atlantic in June, and now I'm back mid-September. The sea should be warmer after that rarest of things here, a good summer. Following a misty day, the skies are just beginning to lift a little, and refusing to test the waters this time, I run straight into the sea. Within minutes, I come up laughing. I've never experienced such balmy <coughs> waters. For ten days, this becomes the evening ritual, the even song. Swimming in that shimmering light is magical. You feel the warmth of the late sun on your body as you're gently lifted up and over the waves. You swim, you swim towards the light and your body seems to glow with it. Sometimes the sea is silver, sometimes rippled, blue and green, always changing. One evening a walker, dressed warmly in his woolen sweater, passes by and looks in astonishment at this middle-aged mermaid emerging from the water. <laughs> What's it like? he asks. Wonderful, I reply, and can see he doesn't believe me. <laughs> I remember a young woman I met in Australia who said that surfing the waves was the closest that she'd ever get to an experience of God. For me, it's the magic of the buoyancy, the sense of being held. I think that at this stage in my life, I'm finally learning to trust. Don't fight it, my father said, teaching me to swim many moons ago. I'm sensible, though, of the dangers of the sea and happy to have my land companion keeping watch and waiting for me with a towel. I come out, do a little dance along the beach with my toe, draw a circle and write, Alleluia. Then we sit and watch the setting sun and wait until the waves wash over and swallow my words, taking them back out to sea. Thank you very much.